G'day and welcome, Kyle here, and we're about to enter another test series, and a test series I am really looking forward to, India versus England in India, and we all know India have come off this historic test series win in Australia, England are coming off a convincing series win over in Sri Lanka, so we've got two teams entering uh, a test series in good form. And we all know the story about India, how they've had had uh, lots of injuries. Uh, so let's get into that soon. But um, these two teams, they're both coming off series wins, but they are some of the best teams in the world as well. So let, let's add that into play. I think New Zealand, uh, India, uh, England and Australia are the four best test playing teams in the world. And we've just had the India-Australian series and we're about to go into this England-India series. And so tonight, what I'm going to do here on this show, I'm going to discuss and talk and highlight the Indian side. And then this time tomorrow, I'll discuss the England side, what possible combinations they may have heading into this test series, which is going to be very important for both sides. So we'll get into it with India. We'll discuss India tonight. And I'm really keen to get uh, your comments and your thoughts as well on what the coach um, Ravi Shastri is going to do with this lineup. Um, so yeah, give me lots of feedback. Challenge me. Tell me if, if you think I've got it right, or, or tell me if you think I've got it wrong. It's really good to, to to get your feedback, and let's have a good dialogue on what we think the starting eleven is going to be for India. Let's before we look forward, let's just look back. That last test at the Gabba, which was an amazing uh, test win. Let's just go over that 11. Eh? We, so we had Rohit Sharma at the top, uh, Shubman Gul, uh, Pajara Rahane, captain the side. Let's not forget about that. He did a fantastic job, Ajinki Rahane, at leading that side over there. Uh, Pant, well, he was dynamic, wasn't he, with the bat. Won them the test series. Arguel played the test. Washington Sundar. Um, Shadow Thacker, uh, Navdeep Sani, uh, Siraj and Natarajan was the starting 11 for India. Now we all know at the start of the Test Series in Australia that that would not be, well no one would have guessed that that would be the starting 11 for the fourth Test at the Gabba. It's funny how it all changed. Uh, I've said it before, I don't care about India A, B, C or D teams, it's irrelevant. All those players are deserving international cricketers and they showed what they were worth on that stage over in Australia. So that was that starting 11. Now this is where I think it changes because there's some good players that didn't play that last test who I think got better test records and first class records. I think uh, Rohit Sharma and Shubman Gill are going to um, open at the top. Uh, Shubman Gill, uh, class act. Absolute class act. He is the player I am I love watching bat. When I grew up here in New Zealand, there was a very stylish batsman called Martin Crow, uh, one of New Zealand's great batters. Uh, he's just lovely on the eye to watch, and uh, Shubman Gill's like this. He is just a beautiful player to watch out in the middle. So it's just going to be fascinating to see how he uh, builds his international career over the next decade. But anyway, so we've got Sharma and Gill at the top. Pajara the wall, I think, bats three. Uh, very good series in Australia. Uh, how many bruises? I'm, I hope he's recovered from all his bruises that he took on his body in, uh, throughout that test series because Australia certainly peppered him with the short ball. But uh, he is prepared to have a long stay at the crease. And he is the one, depending, depending on the uh, English combination of what they go for, we'll discuss that tomorrow night. Let's say it's a, an Anderson or broad, he'll be the one who to, to take the shine off the ball, uh, to take the shine off the ball big time, uh, so he can let his stroke makers play around him. Um, Virat Kohli comes back into the eleven. Now this is interesting because I think he will have a massive point to prove. I don't think he has had the best twelve months uh, in Test cricket, but I think the wee freshener he has had at home for the birth of his child would do him the world of good and there's been a little bit of uh, media press public opinion that perhaps a Jinky Rahane should be the skipper of this test team but we saw recently a Jinky Rahane come out and say that Virat Kohli is the skipper he is just a stand-in for the Australian series but I still think 
Virat Kohli will have a big, big point to prove, and I feel he's going to do it with the bat. He is going to let that bat veer do the talking in this test series. So he'll come in at four. Um, Rahan at five, well, he's a good player. Pamp, he plays, and absolutely he should because he was dynamic with the bat. He can play the game where he needs to bat time if the team requires it, but he can also be destructive and change the game very, very quickly. He can score runs very quickly, Pamp. His keeping... It's going to be more difficult for him to keep in India than it is in Australia because in Australia, you get good, consistent bounce off those bouncier wickets over there. So his test, um, his keeping ability is going to be tested a whole lot more in this series. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Oh, I hope he's been doing a lot of work with his, um, his keeping because you know what he can do with the bat, but he plays. Uh, now it's the bowling combination. What do they do? They go to India going with three seamers. Uh, or two seamers, specialist seamers, and play two spinners. Let's not forget, England, they struggle, and they always have. They always struggle in the subcontinent playing spin. But the reports are this test uh, down in Chennai, the wicket could have a little bit more grass on it. So I think we'll find more in a few days about that wicket. But I think India needs to use their strength, potentially, of going in with a spin. So we... There's a few permutations here because Jadeja is out, isn't he? He is a class act, Jadeja, and he is a man for the big occasion, but he is out, so we cannot select him. Ashwin comes in. Uh, Boomer comes in. He's got to come in. And Ishant Sharma, I believe, will come in. Please not he didn't make, his, make it to Australia because of a wee niggle and an injury, but I think he will definitely come back into this Test 11. Uh, he is a wonderful bowler. Yes, I know. Natarajan, uh, Navdeep Sani, and um, Suraj did a fine job. I think Sharma, with all his experience, comes back into the side. Now, the third seamer, do you go with Suraj, which I think deserves it if you go with the three seamers, or do you bring another spinner and leave him out and bring in p- perhaps, perhaps, Kildee as the variety? Because the other option uh, is, I think, Washington Sunda and perhaps Axa Patel are going playing off that spot. But if that happens, um, you've potentially got two off-spinners in the lineup. You don't want to do too much of the same, same. Uh, XR Patel's got, uh, I guess, more first-class experience um, than Washington Sunder, but he did a, a really fine job over in Australia. And I think you've got to reward players who, who do well. So majority of the team picks itself. It's just the combination of bowlers of what you want to go in with. And I think that will be the, dis- well, you tell me what discussions should Skipper Virat Kohli and coach Ravi Shastri be having about these combinations. Do you go in with the two fast bowlers and the two spinners, or do you chop it down to the three fast bowlers, sorry, increase it to the three fast bowlers and just have the one specialist spinner, which has to be Ashwin. Uh, he had a, didn't play that last test over in Australia, but he had a fine series over over there and his experience he can bat as well so he has to play so it's just that co- that bowling combination i think is the point of discussion uh, but that top order it's um pretty much picks itself and uh india it's gonna be fascinating to see how they kick off this series because sometimes i've always found when an international touring team goes into Australia, and whether they win or they lose, they normally play well in the following series, whoever that is against. Uh, yes, India did win over in Australia, so they should take a lot of confidence of that, but they still need to stick to the basics of what they do really well and try not to rush this uh, test match against England. Uh, England have come out of winter. Yes, they went down to uh, Sri Lanka, played two test matches there. No warm-up games at all, and they played very, very well. But this Sri Lankan side, I don't think you can, can compare at all to this Indian lineup. So, uh, And some of those players are maybe underdone. Let's not forget Ben Stokes and Joffrey Archer weren't in uh, Sri Lanka, but we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. But with India, I think they take a lot of confidence from their performance over in Australia and uh, but they need to manage that confidence as well and still try and play aggressive cricket um, because the side that I just mentioned what I think might be the group they're discussing is all class. 